Hello everybody, good evening if you are in my time zone and good morning or good afternoon if you are in different time zones. Just hello to you all. Uh, today I would like to say a warm hello from my office and today I will have a very special guest with me and this very special guest will be one of our developers, Pavel, who is currently working on our new game called War Mongrels. And I'm super excited about this stream because it's the second one already. Uh, the last one from last week with another of our developers, Kuba. Uh, you can still find it on Twitch and you can find it on YouTube also where they will stay. I don't know why I put it this way. You can just find them there. Um, and um, we have prepared some surprises for you for today, but I'm not the proper person to disclose them. Pavel will tell you everything. As I said, he is one of the developers currently working on War Mongrels, our new game. Um, and speaking of War Mongrels, please do not forget that along with Das Forma, we have prepared something super special for you, which is the limited edition starter pack the collector's edition and you can visit the website 1944.warmongrels.com and see it in details why this number why 1944 well clearly when it comes to the year in history in connection with war mongrels it needs no further explanation but also we are going to produce 1944 copies not less not more so please make sure to visit 1944.warmongrels.com and in the meantime i want to show you what the limited edition will look like as seen through the eyes of the creators das forma so to properly warm up, I hereby cordially invite you to a short commercial break, but a very special one. Hello, hello, hello. This is Mark from Das Forma. We, together with Destructive Creation, prepared something unique for you. Inside our crate you will find a lot of merch, but not any kind of merch. This is one of the kind, limited edition, customized, only for you, merch that is fully related to the game but not any game this is war mongrels check it out there are no plastic inside there are no cheap chinese sub products everything is made in europe everything is made with love everything is made with passion it's not an item this is an item of honor and it's only available now in limited edition. We have many unique peoples on board. Check out what Kasia, Pavel, Isa and whole production team prepared for you. It's not just any products. This is handmade, detailed, perfect custom merch. One of the kind. Only 1944 will be made. They are so unique. Check it out. Go, go, soldier! Go ahead and buy it. Only 1944 crates are made. 
1944 crates prepared for you by our special Das Forma team. Are you ready for it? Don't ask what war mongrels can do to you. Ask yourself what you can do for war mongrels. All right, uh, we're back. Uh, we're back. What? Said <laughs> <laughs> so you can barely see me, but yeah. No, it's, Hello. it's fine. Hello, everybody. This is Pavo. Hi, uh, what, welcome. <laughs> and what do you do about what warm do uh, That's a very good question. I ask myself this all the time. Uh, <laughs> um, in war monglers, though, uh, jokes aside, I'm doing mostly uh, mostly level design. But uh, uh, I was hired as a level designer. But since I got some ex like. I've got quite a lot of experience in video game programming and some experience in game design. Uh, I quickly became like this uh, kind of do-it-all guy. Uh, I'm doing. I'm, I'm responsible for a lot of scripting, a lot of gameplay mechanics, scripting, a lot of most of our abilities that our heroes and our uh, enemies have. Um, but yeah, mostly mostly level design and mechanics implementation, and occasionally some of the game design. All right. That sounds uh, very complex. So, is there? It's not. It's not. <laughs> it's not. So, because you're very good at it, so you find it easy. Let's put it that way. Yes. It was a compliment. Let's put it that way. Yes. <laughs> I'm like I'm. I'm no. I'm working a lot with our main game designer, uh, our programmers, and a lot with our level artists. Uh, so I'm basically responsible for making like fun gameplay that's also looking pretty, although. When it comes to the pretty part, um, they don't really need me there. I'm just occasionally removing one tree or two trees from the level because they clearly cover up all the action and then Maya, our level artist, come in and yells at me all the time all for, right. for ruining her work. I was about to ask if there is something which is particularly challenging, so it's... Uh, this it's our level artists, yes. <laughs> all right. Okay, who would have thought, you know, such a nice person. Yeah. Um, well, thank you. Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say hello to our guests who are coming, uh, especially Dark Magnetic Storm, who was uh, here yesterday all the time oh. during the stream. Uh, and also hello, Carolina. Thank you guys for, for joining. And perhaps uh, after this uh, brief introduction, we could uh, proceed with the proper part. Uh, um, again, again, I didn't hear you. Oh, okay. Uh, with the what? The proper part of oh, the well, stream. Oh, oh, sure, sure, sure. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so I was wondering if we could show our audience some uh, gameplay moments, uh, some highlights uh, which you could discuss, perhaps. Yeah. Well, today we were we were supposed to be talking about our planning mode in the game. Exactly. Uh, which is uh, which is like compared to our our other games. It probably is the closest experience to to Ancestors Legacy. Um, well, obviously the games are very different, but uh, in Ancestors Legacy there is this tactical part of the game where you kind of put your uh, some of your troops in the bushes and the other like other like front line and on the main road, and then you hide archers somewhere. You plan it all out, and then when the time is right, like you send all the troops in flanking uh, enemies from sides and so on. So basically you plan, plan your uh, actions before and then once the time is right, you go in, start the battle, then you don't, then you can't really do much in the game because like our game, Ancestral Legacy, works that way when it's all about planning before, like the strategy. And planning mode is kind of similar to that, although you were, of course operate on like few people, like a uh, few, few uh, singular guys instead of armies. Okay, so you have particular characters and you can basically instruct them 
and yes. execute, at, they start acting at the same time. At the same time, and also there is a mode where you can um, time each action. Oh. So you can like be more precise with how they how they do each action. Like uh, we can see this on the on the All footage. All right. Okay. So perhaps uh, let's go to the to the footage. Okay. Uh, um, can I the mouse? Yes. Sure. Oops. The mouse is yours. Okay. Here I can. Okay. Uh, so this is like the first situation over here, uh, and I've lost my, as you can see, you, I've lost my uh, cigarettes to the enemy soldier, the one with the cigarettes icon above him. Uh, as soon as he goes away, I get inside this truck with Manfred, and now I am ready to plan out my action. So the whole picture here is that I tried to lure this guy out with the cigarettes, but I didn't notice that he's walking around with the dog. Now, dog is a very special kind of enemy. Uh, because he's like hard to eliminate because he can sense you in a 360 count that you can see right now on the screen uh, he can basically basically sniff you out uh, that makes him really hard to eliminate because you uh, you can't really walk up to him and kill him with a knife in a melee range like a normal soldier a normal soldier if you walk up to him from behind you can kill him but to a dog you can't do that um, the only exception to this rule is when you are hidden in like a building and a door or in this case if you are hidden inside the truck like I am uh, so it's time for my big plan to get my back, get back my cigarettes uh, okay and what you see here is uh, this is the planning mode overlay where the screen becomes uh, dark like this and everything that's important sticks out uh, in this mode uh, basically at any time in the game you can press tab tab key uh, and the game will slow down extremely to the point where it almost stops. And now you can plan out each action for each character. Uh, if, if you would give any orders to the character right now, uh, they won't do it immediately. Instead, they will remember the order. And then when I press enter, they will trigger the actions uh, simultaneously at the same time. So my plan, because dog is so hard to reach, uh, my plan is to actually use my sniper that's on the, on the tower and shoot the dog off with a sniper rifle and right when that happens I want Manfred to jump out of the truck and kill the guy before he has any time to react like they won't even know what hit them right so I have every action planned out and I'm just waiting till they turn around and as soon as they turn around I press enter and boom boom they didn't even have time to react like they don't, they had no time to raise alarm so uh, it worked. I got my cigarettes back, and this is what an unhealthy addiction leads to. <laughs> exactly, and uh, we could also see uh, that uh, it it was completely safe for your characters. Well, uh, this they is a funny part actually, uh, because let's let's let's, let's just okay. let's just uh, give this let's let's let this uh, footage just go. The funny part is this is not my level. This level was made by my colleague, uh, a fellow developer. And I was playing this level uh, to give him feedback on the level. Like if it's fun to play and everything works and so on. And this solution right here, like he never intended for people to actually try and lure out this guy with the cigarettes. Like, <laughs> the guy with the dog is supposed to be there just to scare you off. So you don't go that way. Uh, but uh, I screwed it up and I lost my cigarettes. Now my two, I have two options. I either uh, load the game from the previous save point or I come up with like an idea to, to how to eliminate them. So this is not an intended way, but uh, once he saw my solution, he really liked it. I liked the fact that it actually like worked. I felt really good about uh, about this. And uh, so yeah, the, game, like, the level design is generous enough that you can come up with your own solutions to, this, to these situations. So it means it proves actually what we said before during streams that you can tackle the same problem using different methods in this game. There is yeah. no one fixed way. If to you go. have creative solutions in your mind, like your imagination is pretty much the limit here. And of course, the abilities of your heroes on, on the level. All right, so far, so good. Uh, very interesting. Um, I, I think we can um, okay. show the, the next footage in a moment yeah um and we're sorry about uh, the 
problem on Twitch. It's it's really not the first time that it's uh, happened. Yesterday it uh, didn't happen, so we have no idea why it happens now. Uh, but you will be able to watch uh, this stream uh, later today because I will upload it immediately, um, permanently. And for now we can only invite you to Facebook. Uh, we know that for some of you it's lagging, but there is no other solution if you want to watch us now and have the video, not just the sound. Uh, and thank you for the kind words about War Mongrels. Um, okay, so I think uh, we could try another uh, footage. Okay, we can show another situation here. Okay, uh, oh, it's the... please. All right. No, that's uh, that's the second one, isn't it? I can't pause it though. How do I... Uh, okay, it's this one. Okay. Okay, let's just rewind this. Okay, so here's another situation. We're inside a mansion. It's the same level, just a little further in, uh, in the game. We have Manfred now, and we have Joachim, uh, another character. Like Joachim, uh, as you can see, he looks just like a German uh, officer. That's because uh, I managed to steal one of the officer's uh, uniforms. And uh, this little icon above him, this little crossed out eye, uh, it tells you that he is, uh, he is hidden from enemies. Like, he's disguised, people think it's one of the Germans, so uh, they can't recognize him. And we're gonna use that to our advantage. So we have two, those two guys, and we have our uh, sniper, our lead, right outside the, uh, outside the mansion, waiting for our, our orders. Now, the target of this situation is this guy. He has the key to the armory. We need that key uh, for story reasons, which I won't, won't tell you right now. However, we have to basically kill this guy and get the key. Uh, but it's, okay, uh, here I'm showing you that, yeah, I'm disguised and uh, they can see me, right? They just think I'm one of them, so I can just freely walk over here. Uh, now the problem here is that there is this third guy outside, and whenever I try to like target this guy with my knife, it shows me that the uh, noise range from that action is so big that the guy on the balcony will hear that, and he will come in and see what we're doing. So I'm basically, I need to kill this guy, and I need to kill this guy. And then I have to do something about the third guy because he's gonna hear the action and raise the alarm. And this is where Led comes in uh, as our sniper. Basically, like from here he can't reach him, but there is a conveniently placed tower over here, <laughs> a watchtower, watch post for enemies. We're gonna use that. We're gonna eliminate this soldier over here because he probably wouldn't like uh, us shooting his fellows. And now that we've got the uh, higher elevation, we can target this guy outside and uh, everybody's ready to do, to do their job we just need a perfect timing now so I'm gonna wait for this uh, for this officer here to get closer to Joachim so I can open this door and have no delay later and now everything is set I'm pressing enter here and there we go no witnesses whatsoever <laughs> I'm getting the key and we can progress with the mission. All right. Uh, so these were two examples of uh, footage from the game and we start to have the first questions. Oh. Uh, our first set of questions was is from Piotrek. Um, hello, Piotrek, as always. Hello, hello. And uh, Piotrek uh, says that uh, he wrote it in Polish, so I'll translate for everybody. Uh, he has a few questions when it comes to the gameplay and the mechanics, because it's the first time he can see the game here during the stream. Um, and he likes the graphics, <laughs> basically. <laughs> That's not a question, though. So the, there are two questions. Uh, is there any tactical pause or anything similar? Um, the tactical boss is exactly what what we are talking today about. It's the planning mode. It's it doesn't exactly pause the game, but it stops the like the game slows down extremely like to the point where it, it almost stops. So um, you could treat this as a tactical pause, like it won't stop the game entirely. So there is still there is still an option that an enemy that already noticed you will shoot you down, but. Uh, 
it's a semi-pause. I don't know how to explain it otherwise. We didn't want an actual pause in the game, but we slowed down time a lot so you can you can manage your, your options. You have time to like think whether I want to shoot this guy, whether, whether I want to throw a knife at him or whatever. Like I, you can see if this action makes too much noise or whatever you need. Uh, there is enough time, but it's not a pause. So the time doesn't like completely stop to zero. No, no. Okay, it just slows down radically. It slows down super hard. <laughs> okay, uh, and uh, Piotrek's second question: uh, Is there any bigger equipment, uh, or are uh, only the slots visible in the footage? Well, there are slots visible in the footage, uh, although. Characters have most more skills than just what you see on the on the slots, and the slots uh, are some somewhere. I mean, they are they are interchangeable. Like there are missions and items in the game that change what you, what you have on the on the on the slots. So while they're not, there is no like an like a an actual big inventory for your items. You can actually like change what skills you have during the mission. And it sometimes changes uh, per mission. Like there are missions where, for example, well, one of our, our other characters has different sets of skills. It's the same character, but has different sets of skills uh, depending on whether it's night or daytime. So it makes them much more human because uh, there are characters we all know, like a small woman carrying uh, big guns, a rocket launcher, 80 grenades, it's yeah, not and this a truck in their pocket. And then, of course, <laughs> of course, and 100 medkits, for yeah, example. Yeah, yeah. So it doesn't work like this. No. We're human. Yeah, we are basically a human being. We have like few pockets, maybe, maybe, one, maybe something in your sock, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it was war, so for sure people were very resourceful. Yeah, they have to like, they have to adapt for each mission, like they have to adapt to what they encounter during their, well, adventure, pretty much. Sure. Um, perfect. Uh, we've got a question from Carolina. Is there any AI taking control over the rest of the playable characters in the single player mode? Okay, in the single player mode, uh, if you've been to our pre previous streams, you've seen that we have this, uh, like a combat mode. The game is, you can play it either stealthily or in the combat mode. In the combat mode, if you put all your heroes in combat mode, and then like you can because you can only select one, right? If you put all of them in combat mode, then the the one that you have selected, you are controlling, but the the other guys will follow this guy and uh, they will battle with you, and they are controlled by AI. But if you're doing stuff stealthily without the combat mode, then no, every other character is basically waiting for your orders, and. Uh, if at any point they would do something without you selecting them, it's thanks to the planning. It's thanks to the planning mode because you've planned an action and then triggered triggered it with one of the buttons. All right, great. Uh, one more question from Piotrek: uh, Is there any chance to increase the number of friends in the party, or are there only the two characters? And how many um, people? How many characters in total mm -hmm. can we have in the team? Okay, um, there is, there are missions when you have more than two characters. Uh, actually, the uh, the mission I we just we just showed you one of the clips where you had three characters. For example, there was Joachim in the officer outfit. There was. Okay, Manfred, I will show it once more. And Ooh. there was yeah, there was the second one. Okay. Uh, not here. We have uh, Joachim in the officer's uniform. We have Led over here. As a sniper, and there is Manfred in the the basically in the bathroom uh, to the left, uh, waiting for orders. So there are, there are three characters over here, and in the next clip that we have for uh, in a while, there's gonna be three characters as well. Um, thinking right now, how many characters do we have like uh, the most on a mission? And I think it's four. Mm, I think it's four. I think the most like the mission with the most characters has four characters at once. All right, and um, there is one more question from Piotrek about the characters. 
Uh, does every character have some kind of special skills that we can make use of? Uh, that will come in handy during a specific mission. Okay. Uh, mm, does a lot, lot of analysis. Yeah, I'm think I'm, I'm I kind of like got a bra uh, brain lag and I didn't understand the question. Okay. Basically, every character <laughs> has special abilities. I mean, yeah, sure, most of them have like a knife and a gun, but uh, they always have uh, abilities that are specific to those characters. Like, for example, here we have Manfred that can whistle and drag out enemies with that to the exactly to the position where he is. Uh, Led has a sniper gun, and nobody else can uh, shoot that far and that quietly. Um, he has uh, the pack of cigarettes, which he can use to lead, uh, I mean, not lead, but uh, lure enemies that can see that. And we have Joachim, who can dress up as, a, as an officer, and he can talk, uh, talk to Germans, like uh, actually distracting them. Okay, so each uh, person is uh, very different, like in real life. Yeah, yeah, they, like have, they have <laughs> their unique skills and they are always, we are trying to make the maps in such a way that they are always uh, useful, like there is no single character that is left out. All right, that's, that's uh, I think, uh, that exhausts the, the answer, <laughs> the question, sorry, this answer. Um, and uh, Yarek has asked, how do you actually get weapons in this game? Do you collect them while playing or is every character pre-equipped with some guns at the start? Um, every character is pre-equipped at the start of each mission. They have their own like equipment, but uh, they can collect more ammunition from enemies. And as I said, like there are times where they can collect different skills for their uh, slots. So basically like some characters start without an ability there and they can collect something else. Sometimes they change change the uh, abilities during the mission. So that's pretty much their equipment. Like there is a mission, I think, the mission that we showed already, the second one uh, near Panare, uh, there was a guy named Lucas in the barn and he starts without, like he starts with like just a gun and a knife, I think. And then he collects a bird trap and uh, I think he collects bear trap there. And yes, that. yes. And then he, he can does. use and then he can use that from the for the rest of the game. Uh, but uh, yeah, you don't collect guns. You don't collect guns for, like um, as I've said before. There is no equipment system like in like in an RPG. <laughs> so no. So it makes the game realistic, like everybody can do a specific thing, not yes, that... Yes, and also like we are focusing a lot about uh, on our story that we have to tell. Oh yeah. So, yeah, they, they pretty much play out their... Each, every single character plays out their role, specific role in the game. Alright, so uh, we have no further questions at this very point uh, of this stream. So I think uh, that uh, since we will be changing the footage from the level right now, we're going to move to another level and uh, see planning mode in action differently. Uh, then perhaps the time has come for a short uh, commercial break. Uh, and once more, we would like to point out that we are preparing with Das Forma uh, a limited edition, uh, the collector's edition of War Mongrels. Aren't we already on the Steam and you can wishlist us? Yeah, sure, of course, you can wishlist the game. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you can wishlist the game on our Steam page already. Yes, 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 yes. You, you've been able to wishlist for quite uh, some time already and uh, we are glad that we have a community <laughs> being built already around the game. Um, Oh, and before we go to the commercial, uh, Piotrek has asked uh, one more question. Uh, can weapons be stored in a place such as Armory to admire your arsenal? Can weapon be modified in any way before a mission, for example, to increase the accuracy and so on? Um, you can't collect weapons per se, but you can collect... Uh you can collect um, 
items uh, that are they contain uh, actual uh, history bits oh, about yeah. that period. You can collect uh, like different. Uh, oh my god! Ever, collectibles. Ever, they are collectibles. Yeah, mm. I was trying. I was going for like a, an actual thing. Uh, posters from oh, the right. period of the time. Like you can collect personal letters from characters in the game that are actually based on real characters. Uh, and there's a lot of uh, additional backstory uh, through those items, like through the letters. You could, for example, maybe find a letter from uh, one of the German soldiers writing back to his family or something like this, uh, telling you about how, how the war has changed him and so on. Uh, as for the second part of the question, modifying the guns, well, yeah. not exactly, I'm not sure. I'm not a historian, but I'm not sure uh, that you could modify weapons so easily back then. Uh, as for the accuracy and stuff, uh, this is a tactical game uh, where like, we are trying to aim towards uh, uh, predictability. Like you have to be able to predict what the enemies are going to do, and your actions have to be like certain. Like if if you use a skill of your sniper and you target at someone. You, like you, there can't be any random factor. Like we're pretty sh we're pretty clear about the uh, the idea that there should be no random factors because it's your action you've planned it out. If you're shooting a gun, you have to kill this guy. Uh, otherwise, it would be kind of unfair. If you were shooting the gun, you would miss the guy and then made a lot of noise, made the alarm go off. So no, no, there is no there is no accuracy in the game. Like if you Unless you're playing combat mode, in combat mode you actually could you could uh, get uh, some missed shots, but the combat mode is pretty much different from the rest of the game, and um, I'm I'm not designing this one, so um, yeah, maybe we'll this for another stream. <laughs> yes, the previous stream is available on YouTube and on Twitch, so you can check it out anytime you like. Uh, Piotrek has also asked about when when the game will be released. I'm not sure. Can we tell this? I'm not, sure, I'm not so sure if I can tell that right now. Stay tuned. Um, I'm not the guy to announce the game. Like I'm just a level designer here. <laughs> Stay tuned for the date, for the actual date. All right. And uh, Piotrek has another question, this time a technical one. Um, character, do characters have some kind of experience bar? What does leveling look like? Can we improve the statistics of our characters? Um, you can improve the characters mostly through improving their equipment. Uh, though, as I said, the game the game is focused on a linear story to tell. So there is uh, there is no there's there, there is no experience or leveling system because. Uh, it's it's the level plays out like a story, like a, like a story to tell. So there is like if you're replaying the level, you get pre like you're pl replaying the level only to get uh, like for example achievements. There is gonna be challenge mode uh, uh, in the challenge mode, which changes how you play the level and so on. But there is no experience in the game, like there's no leveling up systems. <laughs> okay, so it's like in real life, you just. Uh have some skills, you're good at something or poor at something, and it's not some artificial well, statistics. The best experience you get is your experience as the player. You get better at the game the more you play it. So, uh, of course, you. I see this as, a, as a, something good. I prefer for I personally prefer games that uh, make me a better player at the game instead of telling me a random number that makes me suddenly much more stronger. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, do we have any more questions at this point? We're especially focused on uh, questions from Facebook. That's why I read them, uh, because our uh, Twitch is invisible right now. It's audible, but not visible. Twitch doesn't like us, apparently. <laughs> doesn't like us, but uh, as soon as the stream is over, we are going to upload uh, the stream and it will be visible. So, don't worry. <laughs> If you're a devoted Twitch user, you will be able to see this stream. Uh, and I think that uh, in the meantime, while new questions are being produced, before we move on with the um, third level, 
Oh, Carolina's it's one yeah. more. <laughs> we still have one more clip from another level. Yes. I think, I think this, this clip is, is from a level that we haven't shown yet. We haven't. Okay. At and, all. And it's a completely new yeah. level for you to see. Uh, it's a clip and also uh, it shows um, the planning mode in a little different light because I've shown you uh, two clips where you were uh, basically planning something out and then pressing one button, one button to execute them all. In the next clip, I'm going to show you uh, how you can execute uh, each action individually to time it right. All right. So in the meantime, uh, let's warm up before discussing uh, another issue. And once more, let us bring you close. Oh my God, a tongue twister. Let <laughs> us bring you closer uh, to the limited edition starter pack for War Mongrels by Das Forma. Hello, hello, hello. This is Mark from Das Forma. We, together with Destructive Creation, prepared something unique for you. Inside our crate, you will find a lot of merch, but not any kind of merch. This is one of the kind limited edition customized only for you merch that is fully related to the game but not any game this is war mongrels check it out there are no plastic inside there are no cheap chinese sub products everything is made in europe everything is made with love everything is made with passion it's not an item. This is an item of honor. And it's only available now in limited edition. We have many unique people on the board. Check out what Kasia, Pavel, Isa and the whole production team prepared for you. It's not just any products. This is handmade, detailed, perfect custom merch. One of the kind. Only 1944 will be made. They are so unique. Check it out. Go, soldier! Go ahead and buy it. Only 1,944 crates are made. 1,944 crates prepared for you by our special Das Forma team. Are you ready for it? What war mongrels can do to you? Ask yourself what you can do for war mongrels. Okay, we're back. We're, we're back. back again. Yes. I think oh. there's one more question. Yes, we got a very uh, interesting question. How about difficult moral decisions? Time base is not easy to play, so I'm thinking if this game will be heavy for the mind of a player. Am I right? Um, about the moral decisions, is that right? Um, yeah, we about we have a small lag, perhaps. Okay, but yeah, it's about fine. the moral decisions. Well, there are there are moral decisions in the game. Uh, 
I don't exactly understand what you mean by time based is not easy to play. This game is, as far as I know, not not exactly time based. Like it's a tact, it's a real tactics game, but uh, we are trying to design it in a way that uh, enemies don't do random stuff. They don't do. They don't have random ideas. If you pay uh, enough attention, if you spend enough time observing their patterns, they their patrolling ways and everything. You can act. They they become predictable, and you can like come up with a plan uh, uh, to outplay them. Uh, but of course, that's that's not that's not always easy. There are alternative paths to get to your goal, and so on. Um, now about the game. If, if is the game, will the game be heavy for mind of the player? That's one of the goals of the game. I'm pre I'm pretty sure. Like I'm I'm not exactly the guy behind the story of the game, but I know it well enough, and I know uh, our creative director, how he imagines the game and how, how he wants it to be, and so far, like, the game aims to be heavy for the mind, like, it, it aims to show you how brutal, how bloody, and how, like, mm, uh, like, ruthless, and uh, how inhuman yeah, the inhuman. war was, yeah. how inhuman was the war, the second world war, so it's gonna be pretty heavy, I think. Uh, from the stuff that I've seen, like just just for example, playing the level of my friend, uh, giving him feedback, there are uh, scenes that are pretty pretty heavy, <laughs> pretty yeah. dark. And based on real events, which makes them even yeah, heavier. And exactly. Uh, once you realize that this is based on real events, uh, and this those horrible things actually happened, uh, I think. Uh, puts it puts life into perspective. <laughs> oh, that's true. That's true. So uh, maybe let's let's show our viewers this um, third clip. Okay. Yes, this, this uh, mysterious third clip. Uh, this is still the second one, and here we can are. Pause it? Can you pause it? Yeah, sure. Uh, we can pause it. We can go back as much okay. as we want. Okay. So maybe let's go from the very beginning, and the floor is yours. Sure. Uh, okay, so um, uh, we have our team of heroes here. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, Manfred, Evold, and Lucas from the second mission. And they have a little dilemma here. They have to go over there to inf infiltrate the base. Uh, they have to get to this point from which they can actually start uh, getting into the base, getting to know what they have to do later on in here. And the problem, uh, the in this situation, uh, my main problem is this patrol here. Uh, it's three guys. One of them is an officer, uh, which makes it harder. They are constantly walking, constantly on the move, which um, I can remember all those uh, the, those vision cones, right? But these guys, they are moving, so it's like it's really hard to put into into your uh, brain map when you're looking at this. So this is the kind of patrol you would probably want to eliminate first. But it's really hard because they are constantly moving and uh, constantly being seen by someone. And plus, they have they have an officer there. An officer makes it so that officers don't react to your usual uh, items like like a bottle like a bottle of uh, a moonshine or like uh, cigarettes and so on. They will ignore it, so they become much harder to lure out. Now, here I'm showing you this crane over here. Uh, can you see the red circle underneath? Okay, there is a, uh, this crane. It holds a box, a giant heavy box. Basically, this red cir circle under the box shows you uh, the area of damage. If I was to use this crane with my character manually, he would release the crane and drop it onto the spot, killing everybody inside. Uh, which, as you've seen before, uh, they are actually walking past this place and I just missed it but I can't get to this place but as you can see right here I'm targeting my second skill my my gun towards the crate I can actually use a gun to remotely trigger this action so naturally I, I have a plan already in my mind I'm gonna hide in, hide in the bushes here uh, with Manfred and Evold Manfred is going to target the, the box to drop it down on the enemies uh, since these two guys can see that, Evolt will eliminate those two with his brawl skill that can eliminate two enemies at once. 
and here comes in Lucas because on the tower here there is a guy who is watching this spot as well so Lucas will get on the roof and he has a, a stone throw he can make a noise remotely uh, to basically distract this guy so we're gonna plan out an action of throwing a stone here and um, turning this guy around so that he doesn't look this way and now as you can see those buttons over there I'm showing you with my mouse cursor these buttons uh, let me uh, individually uh, trigger each action for each character. You can of course use the keyboard, which is, I'm gonna click it just uh, to make it easier to see, but then I'm gonna use enter to trigger two other actions. Since this stone actually travels, it has some time before it lands, I have to use the stone first and then shoot the box. So I'm pressing the button over here and Lucas throws his stone and then I press enter Evil destroys these two and the box kills the other guys. And since this dude actually is about to uh, see everything, I'm just shooting him off, shooting him off with my, with my uh, hand pistol. Uh, just, be just I'll show it again when I'm not talking, so you can actually see how this plays out. There is no sound for some reason, but. <laughs> Oh, we and there we go, comment. boom, 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 everybody's dead, and no witnesses. Very efficient. Okay. Yeah, very efficient, and it's actually, and it feels really good to execute those plans. Okay, we got a response uh, from Bartek. Uh, he says, uh, he thanks us for, for the answer, and he says uh, he knows many brutal and cruel stories from the Second World War, also from uh, his family. Mm. Uh, and he wishes us uh, success. The world should remember what happened at that time. Best wishes. Thank you, Bartek. Best wishes to you. Thank you very you. much. We're trying to make people remember with that. Yeah, it, it has an educational purpose as well. Especially uh, because it, uh, it focuses on Eastern Front, which is not shown so much in like Hollywood movies and so on. Yes, it, it should be because the, the stories are incredible uh, from from that part of the world at, at that period. Okay, I'm, I won't start talking about <laughs> it because we would finish tomorrow. So yeah, uh, but yeah, definitely the, the untold stories, which are uh, yeah, yeah. very uh, important to remember. They're pretty much unknown. Yes. And unknown. Yes. Yes. Uh, and we have one more question from uh, Piotrek. Uh, how long, more or less, uh, is the campaign? Uh, <laughs> days, hours, as you wish. Is there just one uh, pattern for the campaign, or do you make choices which influence the next missions? Okay, um, as for the hours, uh, I'm gonna be honest, I am not exactly sure. I, have, I haven't had time to play the entire game uh, from start to finish. I would say between 15 to 20 hours, uh, but I'm not, not exactly sure. Uh, there are choices, there are choices in the campaign that will uh, change how the campaign plays out. And that's it, I think. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was a quick, quick answer. Uh, so guys, basically we have shown you the mechanics of the planning mode for today and uh, I think Pavel also uh, briefly explained the similarities and differences uh, between War Mongrels and, and Sisters Legacy because uh, they, they are features that uh, people would notice for sure even if we didn't say it on uh, stream. You mean the planning mode? Yeah, I think so. Uh, the planning mode is... Well, it's not exactly required, but I would say for a decent gamer, for a decent player, uh, like if you want to beat the game without a planning mode, it's possible, but it requires a lot of skill, uh, like micromanagement, micro, uh, micro skills on your mouse and your keyboard, but it's possible. But the planning mode makes it much more satisfying to, to like use because it, you can just plan out a perfect action and then time it well, trigger it off, have your characters like destroy a camp of enemies um, in a very, very uh, movie way, I would say. 
And Piotr is also asking, what about the place and time of action? I have just learned about this game on your Steam, that's why I just don't know. How many cities or countries are we going to visit in the course of action? Most of the game happens in Poland, um, but you will you will visit other countries. However, most of the game like happens happens in Poland, uh, in eastern Poland. I'm pretty sure, yeah, it's mostly eastern Poland because it's mostly, uh, as I've said before, it's mostly trying to show you the face of the war from the eastern front. Uh, so it's occupied Poland, yes? Basically. Occupied Poland, uh, kind of torn also, because uh, it's a time where at, uh, the Germans actually are starting to slowly, slowly um, withdraw from the country because uh, uh, Soviet army is coming from the east. So it's pretty much torn. Uh, if you know, you know the history, people were kind of uh, enthusiastic about Soviets coming in uh, because they saw them as uh, uh, liberators, saviors, yeah. liberators. But uh, as the story tells us, it's not quite so uh, black and white. Yeah, it's important to stress that uh, the game alludes simple black and white logic just like the war did, because it wasn't black and white. Well, the war didn't have any logic. <laughs> it didn't have any logic, that's true. That's that's 100% true. So, uh, Piotr, thank you for uh, becoming interested in the game. Uh, I know you from the Ancestors Legacy community, so uh, we're very happy that you decided to learn more about the game and we are more than sure that you will like it or even love it i would say so thank you for all your questions and uh, remember you can wish list us on, on steam already yes you can wish list the game so please don't hesitate uh, you can also visit the website 1944.warmongrels.com uh, to well, learn a little bit more about the limited edition collector's pack and you can just visit the website warmongrels.com to learn more about the game to stay up to date and if you enjoy the historical part of the game you can also wish uh, wishlist visit the website deathisanumber.com uh, where I post interesting things uh, from time to time and uh, if you um, articles have been written by our historical advisor, uh, Michal. Um, thank you, Piotrek, for wishlisting the game and we are going to handle your question right now. Are there uh, any historical facts or uh, actions in this game which took place in reality? Absolutely. <laughs> that was one of the points. Like, the game is uh, inspired by history some characters are inspired by the actual historical characters. Uh, there are some things that we uh, that are a little loose because not everybody. That's why we are inspired by the history. But there are places, actual real places. Some of the levels are very strictly um, laid out according to maps from that period and uh, plans of the city. Uh, so there are totally real places in there. Um, there are even so, there are even some people that are very strictly related to actual people existing during that period in like German army and so on. Although they, their 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 name might be a little changed. But if you know the history, if you know the guy, like if you know your history and you know the guy from your history, you will most likely recognize who we are talking about because the name is just slightly changed. Uh, and we have one more question from Bartek. Do you have any plans for the future of this game? Some DLC or something like roadmap? How about that? Oh, I'm afraid I, I'm afraid I can't really talk about this yet. Uh, you have to stay tuned for the release date. And with the release date, there will be more information about this. Yes, yeah, stay tuned. Follow us on social media, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, Discord. Uh, all kinds of stuff. Of course, follow uh, the Steam product page because uh, all the things are just updated there. 
Mm, on a regular basis. All right, I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't say that. Uh, there was another question about the uh, whether the game is single player or co-op, uh, multiplayer, and yes, the game is. Uh, the game will support multiplayer online co-op for two people. That's great. That's great to hear, uh, and to have it confirmed <laughs> officially. Um, yeah, so that was Piotrek's question, which you have just answered, yes? Um, about uh, single player or multiplayer or cooperation? Yeah, it's it's a two player co-op game. I mean, it's single player first, but there, is, there will be co-op at some point in the game. Great, great to know. So, guys, uh, you can still ask us anything. We are slowly step by step coming towards the end. Uh, once more, the stream will be available on Twitch uh, afterwards. Um, sometimes things happen, basically. Uh, and uh, it seems that uh, Facebook is working perfectly, so you may always add something, if you wish. <laughs> if you wish. Uh, I think that uh, maybe... You can add something like, like a Warmongler's game to the wish list on your Steam. <laughs> of course, of course, uh, Piotrek will come next time. Yes, because uh, there is something very important that we need to point out and uh, stress at this point. Um, next week we are going to have one more stream uh, in this cycle, because we have created a cycle of streams with developers. So next week we are going to see each other during the last stream from this series, this cycle of, uh, of streams. But in general, in the future, you can expect more information, feedback and streams for, uh, from the developers. Um, and guys, if there are no further questions, I think we can slowly call it a day. And uh, next week, uh, we are going to see you at the same time. So Thursday at 7 p.m. And uh, it won't be the only stream next week, but we care both for your entertainment and for your knowledge. So stay tuned right. for information. So thank you very much for participating in the stream and we will see you next week. Bye. Yeah, bye. Thank you. Thank you.